Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2, Long War of the Chosen, the mod guides by Saiken. Uh, shameless plug as always, if you enjoy the content, please feel free to subscribe to the channel or leave a positive comment down below, that always helps. Now on to our uh, topic today, which is going to be base management. If you are new to the mod, it might be a bit overwhelming because the base management in Long War has changed a bit. And I want to go over the majority of changes plus my recommendations of how to deal with them. Uh, base management is probably going to be the last uh, tactic, uh, strategic layer um, uh, game uh, gameplay guide. Uh, we're then moving on to soldiers um, and um, and uh, the science portion of it, but it is nonetheless an important topic. So, what has uh, changed uh, in between the base game and Long War um, is that most of the buildings are now working a tiny bit different, and the underlying theme also works different. Whilst there is such a thing as a best build order or a uh, pretty the optimal build order in the standard game. Uh, not so much here in Long War. There are multiple path, uh, paths or avenues that you can take in order to successfully go about it. The um, uh, buildings themselves are working similarly, but not exactly the same. Resistance Ring still offers you uh, covert uh, actions, albeit um, the actions tend to, uh, or the covert missions tend to take much longer uh, than uh, they did beforehand. And um, at least in the later versions of the mod, I think that they've also massively scaled down the permanent stat bonuses that you can get to prevent uh, creating uh, super soldiers. Nonetheless, it's an important building and I would recommend building it early. The training center um, is in so far interesting um, as it still allows you to uh, create bonds between soldiers and do the individual training of each of the soldiers. However, um, the individual training of the soldiers with ability points is no longer the same as in the base uh, game. Uh, since every soldier now has three different different uh, skill trees, uh, you can no longer choose two skills uh, at the same level. You can only choose extra skills. What I like about the training center is a bit later in the game, it offers you the option to, um, to look through all of the extra abilities, a bit like the advanced warfare uh, center in the standard uh, classical vanilla uh, game, where on each tier you have a chance for up to um, uh, six uh, uh, additional abilities um, that are selected from a pool. Um, the pool for the abilities in Long War is much larger, so you get really truly individualized uh, soldiers, but overall the training center's oomph is no longer as big as it was before. Now probably the biggest change in Long War would be laboratory, which many of you would um, that have played the standard game would scoff at and say, yeah, whatever, laboratory. No longer the case in um, in Long War. In Long War, the uh, research temps uh, have been uh, massively increased, even with six, seven uh, scientists, eight, nine, ten scientists even, you will still take a lot of time to just research uh, uh, the uh, next product. So um, purchasing research um, rushes as well as uh, using a laboratory are actual viable strategies that you could think about specifically to get to certain research breakthroughs like a new weapon tier or a new armor tier. Um, I would personally recommend in every um, run to consider making the laboratory kind of building number three um, uh, in the build order, maybe building number two depending on how, um, on how excited you are. Uh, laboratories can be upgraded and can host up to four scientists, which is great, and they will cumulatively reduce uh, the research time. Keep in mind um, that that will also put a strain on your um, uh, utilization of uh, scientists for Haven advisors. For me, it was always a difficult choice to really put them uh, in either of uh, these roles. That choice uh, luckily begins to become less important in the mid and end game, where you do have 10 um, scientists and then it simply is a matter of staffing everything out. Uh, but laboratory, very important. Workshop, unfortunately, can't. Um, 
yet fully recommended. Um, it uh, definitely helps you with a shortage of engineers. Problem with the workshop is it's kind of again a self-fulfilling prophecy. Um, in order to do it, uh, to to use it, you need to build it. Uh, that'll take time away. You need a lot of funds to actually um, increase uh, the number of drones in here. And all it does is it gives you a few extra uh, drones for the adjacent buildings. You lose um, out on uh, flexibility on your building uh, order and all of that basically frees up a few engineers um, which coincidentally are also used for uh, to create supplies so it's kind of a very snowball-y uh, um, uh, building if you successfully pull it off you will have a much easier mid game uh, but since uh, one of the strategies that I'm emphasizing on which is get uh, as much intel and do the missions uh, properly uh, and, and, and just level uh, a broad a number of soldiers actually requires you to um, uh, to scrap by with very low amount of supplies the workshop doesn't fit that strategy it is entirely possible uh, specifically on lower difficulties to simply do less missions uh, except that you're going to lose some of the missions go for a workshop and just economically out uh, outpace the mid game in that case the workshop would be okay power relay is nothing to say there uh, works just as well as the base game infirmary and guerrilla tactics school probably a big push for both of them uh, the infirmary in particular will help you uh, to reduce uh, the massive amount of um, of uh, downtime that you do have with your soldiers uh, due to injury. One thing that needs to be said about uh, Long War though is you can get by without using an infirmary for a longer period and that's also what I would uh, suggest. I actually built the infirmary I think this fourth or fifth building um, because I simply used uh, the new items for the soldiers that allow you to, um, to gain temporary hit points points. Uh, so if you use vests um, and uh, the um, uh, vests um, and the new temporary hit point items, that'll allow you to take a shot or two without even being injured. Uh, so it was a perfect option for me, a more careful player, uh, to essentially not require an infirmary. Guerrilla Tactics School, uh, on the other hand, gets a strong push. You will need to um, regularly get new soldiers. You will need to regularly um, be able to decide what your soldiers should become based on their stats and you uh, are better making sure that all of that fits together to give you a game edge in the actual uh, game, uh, specifically on higher difficulties. Almost my first building uh, because it is so good. So Resistance Ring and Guerrilla Tactics School really uh, the uh, the uh, the more important buildings. Let's talk shortly about uh, the um, uh, research tree and research in general um, at the beginning and throughout the game. I'll just put that into uh, the guide here um, as, as well. Uh, the research portion of the game has changed quite a bit and there is no not one um, right path uh, about it. Due to the addition of an, uh, of an extra layer of weapons, there are various strategies to go about it. Some people uh, swear onto the um, onto the strategy of rushing, uh, basically passing laser weapons and uh, rushing rushing magnetic weapons from the get go, um, or even uh, passing magnetic weapons and going from laser weapons to pulse weapons. Um, uh, that that are these are options. My personal take on it is. Um, very similar to the core game, if you focus on the things that are actually really, really important in research, you will not uh, uh, you will not be disappointed. My personal uh, votes for those would be um, having laser weapons um, and a single armor upgrade at the beginning is absolutely key. Laser weapons have a built-in uh, chance to hit. Uh, so they get kind of 5% uh, bonus uh, to hit targets, which is fantastic, specifically for your rookies. They are cheap to buy. Um, and one of the things that you need to consider is really how do you economically with uh, a resource starved environment make it work. Secondly, I would highly recommend to go for one armor upgrade uh, for the upgrades in um, in um, modular weapon as, uh, as well as... Um, 
the um, armor upgrades, th those will allow you a hybrid materials. So those, uh, those will allow you to create various vests. I particularly want to name the hazmat vest as probably my go-to strongest item, uh, which makes you immune to fire, um, acid, uh, poison, and a couple of other status effects, and therefore just gives an absolute phenomenal baseline for a character to, to wear, uh, because it cr uh, creates um, much more safety against various uh, highly, highly dangerous folks, such as uh, the um, purifiers um, uh, with um, incendiary grenades that could uh, wipe out an entire team just by uh, hitting you well with them. So uh, that would be my first three, four items that uh, I would recommend you to go to and then really play it uh, by ear. Um, I'm more inclined to go for uh, smaller um, increases of, um, of shorter research instead of spending hours and days and, and weeks on one particular big uh, topic. There is something to be said though um, towards research versus difficulty increase. You will notice that there are uh, steep increases in difficulty in the June, July timeframe, and then again in September, October, which are usually the killer um, increases for many of the campaigns because uh, the new um, aliens with either higher armor or just more hit points will come to the table. The easiest way to combat uh, those uh, would be to have enough research done until this point to have reached the laser, uh, magnetic, and uh, pulse uh, tier in time. The problem with that is you will oftentimes not have enough to um, to uh, equip all of your uh, soldiers with it. So my recommendation there is have it available um, if possible. So if you can um, uh, hit that research uh, cliff, it would be absolutely fantastic. If not, make sure that you do have the uh, necessary tools to circumvent that. Even with lower level equipment, uh, the right ammunition, um, and we can talk about that in the equipment section, the right ammunition, uh, the right defense, as well as a good selection of the right skills and uh, tools can make certain situations much, much, much more easy um, so that you don't need the weapon upgrade. Overall, I would say, though, research it has an incredibly important, um, plays an incredibly important role in long war. Else, um, elsewise, I wouldn't cover it here. And it is uh, relevant to have a successful run going. I'll uh, probably um, I'll show you a little bit of a later um, of a later uh, gameplay in one of the other guides uh, where we uh, see all of the material. That concludes uh, the uh, strategy layer and base management, and we're now uh, going uh, into uh, the guides around soldiers, equipment, and the like. Thank you so much for watching, and have a great day. Bye bye.